of the Arabic quotes. A reading man and woman is a ready man and woman. But a writing man and woman is exact. I this other one now. Oh. Liberate the minds of men and ultimately you liberate the bodies of men. <laughs> oh, hello there. I didn't see you. You know, I'm enthralled by the words of our first national hero, the right excellent Marcus Mazaya Garvey. Welcome to the first in a series of programs leading up to the celebration of emancipation and the independence period. You know, let me tell you something. You see, on August 6th, Jamaica will be 53 years old. And guess what will be happening? We are going to be featuring a whole lot of programs that will inspire and motivate you. So what better way to start than right here at 32 Marcus Garvey Way right here in St. Anne's Bay. The birthplace of Marcus Garvey. You know what? Jamaica Magazine starts right now. So everybody may be sign the line celebration again in Independence Time. For Independence 2015, the Randy Williams Entertainment Center is the place to be. From August 1 to 6, the whole road location will be transformed into an independence village. Come out every day at midday for lots of cultural fun and excitement. Lunch or concerts, cultural discussions, a kiddies village, displays with distinct Jamaican pieces, nightly entertainment and food can done. For more information, call JCDC at 926-5726-9 or email library at jcdc.gov.jm. Independence 2015, proud and free Jamaica 53. Good day, I'm Tamara McHale and this is your GIS News for Monday, July 27. Another 200 residents of Hartford, Morat Lane in Westmoreland are now proud landowners. The recipients have been living on the lands for decades, but without legal ownership. They were given their certificates of possession on July 16 during a ceremony at the Hartford New Testament Church of God in Petersfield. 100 residents from the community were previously given their certificates of possession in March of this year. They are among approximately 600 families of former sugar workers from the community who are being given the opportunity of property ownership under SCJ Holdings Community Regularization Program. Certainly the time has come to provide improved housing to estate workers and their families. And that is why the government of Jamaica is undertaking a comprehensive program of transformation in our sugar dependent communities to address social infrastructure and social economic issues in these communities. At the Hartford handing over ceremony, CEO of SCJ Holdings Limited, John Gale, announced that an interim committee of management had been established to help give oversight in the process. And that comprised persons from within this local area whose primary role is to interact with the residents, to give us feedback as to concerns and to help suggest improvement in the way we deliver to you the service we plan to deliver. Motorists are being encouraged to use their old license plates to proceed with licensing their motor vehicles, as there continues to be a shortage of private motor vehicle license plates in the island. Tax Administration Jamaica TAJ says the private motor vehicle owners should also speak with the collector of taxes to discuss any difficulties being encountered. In the meantime, TAJ says the shortage of new license plates is due to a delay in the supply of raw material which is sourced from overseas. A shipment is expected in the island this week. TAJ says it has put strategies in place to quickly distribute the license plates to its various offices once they have been delivered by the supplier. 
Jamaican and other Caribbean manufacturers were educated on how to maintain the brand of commercial goods that trade on the regional and international markets during a recent workshop. The Jamaica Intellectual Property Office collaborated with Caribbean Export to host the workshop on the topic Branding and the Use of Geographical Indications in the Development of Management Strategies for Origin-Linked Products. The two-day sub-regional workshop sought to build Cariforum producers' capacity to identify and develop geographical indications. Jamaica is known for its jerk, Mexico for its tequila, and France in champagne. However, without the protection of geographical indications, these notable niche products can easily be misrepresented by others riding on their goodwill. The workshop is a critical step in protecting our unique and distinctive Caribbean products. Among the topics addressed at the workshop were building brand value, the process of registration of a geographical indication, supply chain analysis, and intellectual property. The Justice Ministry is leading Jamaica's observation of human trafficking week from July 24 to 31. The week will coincide with the first ever observation of World Day Against Human Trafficking, which will be marked on July 30 this year. It was determined that such a day was necessary to raise awareness of the situation of victims of human trafficking and for the promotion and protection of their rights. The Justice Ministry's Permanent Secretary was speaking at a GIS think tank on Friday. She revealed that after drug dealing, trafficking in persons was tied with illegal arms as the second largest organized criminal industry in the world. It is estimated that 27 million people worldwide are trapped in the modern form of human slavery, with women accounting for the majority of victims. The permanent secretary said a 2007 research study on the nature of the problem locally was being updated and should be completed by August 31. And finally, national emancipation and independence celebrations began on Sunday with church services across the island. The national thanksgiving service was held at the St. Jago de la Vega Cathedral in Spanish Town. During the ceremony, Youth and Culture Minister Lisa Hanna asserted that notwithstanding our challenges, the country had much to celebrate. And so we must celebrate, and no one must make us feel apologetic for enjoying ourselves because we have a lot to celebrate this year. She pointed to the Blue and John Crow Mountains being designated a World Heritage Site, reduction of the national debt, the provision of nutrition services to all basic school students, and new renewable energy investments as some of the achievements for the year. The minister encouraged Jamaicans to participate in the many emancipation and independence activities, saying persons should use the opportunity to de-stress and reflect. This year, we have a number of things that you can do, but you must come out because we are a proud and free country. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamara McHale. Thank you for watching. Let's celebrate Jamaica to the world. Fastest man in the world. First Jamaican woman to win gold in Olympic 100 meter sprint. An upcoming global superstar. Mouth watering meals. And a vibrant set of people. We are Jamaicans. Let's get together and bring back the love. So everybody may be sign the line celebration again independence time. Come catch the Independence 2015 fever and join in the competitions. There is the best decorated office and window competition for business and office owners. Best decorated town competition for parish councils. Best spirit of independence competition for media houses and the best diaspora celebration for the Jamaican massive living abroad. So what are you waiting for? Make we celebrate! To enter, simply submit six photographs of your project by July 31 to jcdc.festival2015 at gmail.com. The competitions run from July 15 to August 15. For more information, call JCDC at 926-572629 or email library at jcdc.gov.jm. Independence 2015, proud and free Jamaica 53. The ends you serve that are selfish will take you no further than yourself. But the ends you serve for all in common will take you into eternity. That quote by Marcus Garvey is often used by our Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Portia Simpson Miller, as she drums up support for us to work together to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and of course, do business. 
We hear more from her in Jamaica House Weekly. Prime Minister receives report on state-owned enterprises, new independent regulatory body formed, and congrats reggae boys. I'm Simone Wolf with Jamaica House Weekly. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller is back in office after taking four days vacation leave starting last Tuesday. Mrs. Simpson-Miller returned to office this past Saturday. While she was away, Minister of Water, Land, Environment and Climate Change Robert Pickersgill was in charge of the government. Before her departure, Prime Minister Simpson Miller met with a delegation from the Asian Development Bank. The delegation paid a one-week visit to the island to present the findings of a study entitled Finding Balance 2014, benchmarking the performance of state-owned enterprises in island countries. The report found that Jamaica's state-owned enterprises contribute 1.5% of GDP compared to 4.5% in poorer countries in the Pacific. The study also uncovered that privatization of state-owned enterprises doesn't lead to increased service costs to the public. Instead, it leads to more efficient and profitable enterprises. The Prime Minister also welcomed a delegation from UK-based charity Chain of Hope International, led by founder Professor Sir Magdi Yacoub. Since 1995, the organization has been providing life-saving heart operations to children. 29 countries, including Jamaica, have been benefiting from the charity, which carries out cardiac surgery in the children's homeland. The Minister responsible for information held the weekly Jamaica House press briefing on Wednesday. She told the media that Cabinet had approved the immediate separation of Bureau of Standards Jamaica's regulatory division to make way for an independent entity. It's to be called the National Compliance and Regulatory Authority. The new body will be responsible for registering processed food establishments, inspecting goods at ports of entry and in the local market to ensure compliance as well as perform regulatory functions. She explained that the move was intended to correct an inherent conflict of interest in the BSJ's organizational structure. The conflict stems from the fact that the Bureau performs conformity assessments, sets standards, and then seeks to regulate the standards it has set. The National Compliance and Regulatory Authority is expected to strengthen Jamaica's compliance with international and regional trade agreements. The Bureau of Standards is one of two government agencies undergoing restructuring under the World Bank Government of Jamaica Strategic Public Sector Transformation Project. At the Jamaica House media briefing, Senator Faulkner said Cabinet had also approved the participation of Philip Caldwell in the 31st Annual Telecommunications Conference being held in Miami, Florida. And Labor Minister Derek Kelly's visit to Canada was likewise approved. He is expected to iron out the discontinuation of deductions from employees' salaries and meet with employers and Jamaicans on the farm work program. And Minister Faulkner revealed that there were two new contracts signed in Cabinet. The first was a $49.5 million contract to rebuild the Harborhead Bridge in Port Morant, St. Thomas. Construction is expected to be completed in six months' time. The second contract was to rehabilitate the Falmouth Main Road seawall at a cost of $50.7 million. That project will begin in August and last for four months. Minister with responsibility for sport, Natalie Nita Headley congratulated the reggae boys on their historic win against the United States Wednesday. Minister Nita Headley said she was proud of the team's hard work and congratulated them on a job well done. The reggae boys' historic 2-1 win over the U.S. on home soil secured their place in the finals of the CONCACAF Gold Cup. The reggae boys, however, went down 3-1 Sunday in their matchup against Mexico. That's how we close today's edition of Jamaica House Weekly. Join us next time for the latest stories coming out of the office of the Prime Minister. Householders, business people, school administrators, be on the alert. Help control the mosquito population. Destroy breeding sites. Empty old tires and all other containers where water can settle. Bore holes in old cans. Cover water drums and garbage cans. Wash flower pots and vases and clean pet dishes regularly. Protect yourself from mosquito bites. Cover your body as much as possible.
and use mosquito repellent containing D. Lift up yourselves, men. Take yourselves out of the mire and hitch your hopes to the very stars themselves. Let no man pull you down. Let no man destroy your ambition because man is but your companion, your equal. Man is your brother. He's not your Lord. He's not your sovereign master. Those words summarize Garvey's life work. Take a look. A people without knowledge of their past history, origin and culture is like a tree without roots. A boy of humble beginnings, taking his first steps towards a life decorated and defined by the search for a proud black identity. The journey began on August 17, 1887, in a rural district nestled in the garden parish of St. Anne, where the union of a mason and a domestic worker birthed a living legacy of black self-empowerment. When you hear him describe his mother, um, Sarah Jane Garvey, she had a different kind of influence on him. I think that he inherited a lot of her sense of compassion. Marcus also inherited much from his father, Marcus Messiah Garvey Sr. Together, his parents gave him a strong foundation, starting at 32 Market Street in St. Anne's Bay. The Universal Negro Improvement Association, the Pan-African Movement, the Negro Factories Corporation, the Black Star Liner Shipping Company, all symbols of achievement to which Garvey could lay claim. But his life was more than the public platform familiar to most. Garvey was equal parts Pan-Africanist and father, equal parts orator and husband, scholar and son, national hero, and lifetime student. As a young boy, Garvey developed a love of reading, first from his father's private library, and later, the more extensive collection of his godfather, Alfred Burroughs. An apprenticeship with Burroughs at age 14 provided a platform for literary expression through the printing press. It's an influence that would find expression in several newspaper developments and publications throughout Garvey's life. Even as he trod the path of visionary philosopher and scholar, Marcus Garvey was a family man. After a long courtship, he married Amy Ashwood in a private Catholic church ceremony, followed by an elaborate public ceremony and reception at Liberty Hall on Christmas Day, 1919. The union didn't last. But Garvey found love and family life again with his longtime secretary, Amy Japes. The two married in July 1922 and had two sons, Marcus Jr. and Julius. You can see letters that they, they wrote to each other when his sons were in Jamaica and he was in England. He has nicknames for them. Um, he speaks to them the same way a loving father would speak to any child. From the dirt tracks in a small rural community to a global stage promoting change, the right excellent Marcus Mosiah Garvey was the epitome of ambition. When you look at his background versus what he was able to achieve in a very, very short time period, you have to recognize that it was ambition that was driving him. But most importantly, he had ambition, not just for himself, but for people of his race. He wanted black people to be liberated in every sense of the word, not just physically, but mentally, economically, socially, and so on. On June 10, 1940, a nation lost a hero. Humanity lost a world changer. Marcus Garvey was finally laid to rest in 1964 in Jamaica after 52 short years. 
The man from St. Anne's Bay had given black people a new way of looking at themselves. He'd told them to embrace their identity, that they could achieve anything. Up you mighty! Accomplish what you will! No one remembers Paul Marcus Jarvis. No one remembers Paul Marcus Jarvis. It's been 11 months. Seven years. 12 years. Since I became the most important person in the world. There's a big responsibility to know, sir. Her future is in I hands. I have to tell him and show him that he is my number one. I want to prepare them for life's journey. So as them grow, them know the difference between right and wrong. I got to make sure that we keep him out of bad company. Because if I don't raise him right, the streets are going to raise him. I feel, she feel. If me stumble, him fall. Knowing I'm responsible for their future, and they're responsible for Jamaica's future. So I won't give up or allow her to quit. I'm going to make sure I'm safe on the street and I will. Me, prefer to tell them no now than watch them regret it later. Because to the world, I'm just another person. But to my child and the whole wide world. Back in May, Minister of Youth and Culture Lisa Hanna announced government plans to make Marcus Garvey's childhood home a Jamaican National Heritage Site. The expectation is that the site will be ready in time for Garvey's next birthday on August 17, 2016. While you wait for that to come to fruition, check out these attractions. Wondering where to go for fun, excitement, or the opportunity to hang out with family and friends? Look no further. The Urban Development Corporation has a wide variety of recreational facilities, including beaches for your enjoyment. Journey with us to the western end of the island, which is known for its wide sand beaches, West Valant to be exact. There you will find the Long Bay Beach. Long Bay Beach Park is found along Negril's sparkling seven miles of white sand beach. Open daily from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., the beach has picnic benches in the park and changing facilities. Visitors have more than nine hectares of beach to enjoy at Long Bay Beach Park. On the north coast, the jewel of Caribbean waterfalls reigns supreme at Duns River Falls. Duns River Falls is one of the island's most outstanding natural treasures. It offers 600 feet of climbing pleasure for thousands of visitors and locals alike. The Duns River Falls and Park, which is a popular recreational spot all year round, is open daily from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. In proximity to Duns River Falls is another of the UDC's managed and maintained facility, the multi-award winning Green Grotto Caves. This tourist attraction includes a guided tour through an active cave system. The experience is educational, historic, cultural, and a soft adventure. During the tour, emphasis is placed on protection of the natural ecosystem as the caves operate within the tenets of an environmental management system. The caves were the first worldwide and in the Caribbean to be awarded Green Globe certification. This certification confirms that the Green Grotto Caves maintain good environmental and social practices. Green Grotto Caves is open every day between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. and has other facilities and amenities such as restrooms, a snack shop, a logo shop set on well-manicured lawns and gardens. So we showed you those breathtaking beaches and recreational spots along the north and west coasts. Now it's time to travel to the east. There we'll explore the picture-perfect Reach Falls in Portland. These pulsating falls are situated in a luxurious tropical park found along five miles above Mansion Hill, a small fishing village. 
The attraction features a cascading waterfall, a picnic area, and a nature trail. The lush greenery of the mountain forest and the refreshing pool beneath the waterfall promise a memorable experience. Reach Falls is open Wednesday to Sunday between the hours of 8.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. In Helsha, St. Catherine is the Fort Clarence Beach for the beach lovers. The 16-hectare beach park is a popular family fun day and picnic spot. It's also an ideal relaxation spot for residents of Fort Moore, Kingston and neighboring communities. Or oh, white sand, fish and bami and a clean atmosphere is one that guarantees the best beach experience. So this weekend, why not treat yourself? Opening hours are Wednesdays to Fridays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturdays and Sundays from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So when thinking of where to go for fun, excitement or just to hang out with family and friends, remember to choose for more beaches, Long Bay, Bluefields, Duns River and Fort Clarence. And for other activities, there are the Green Grotto Caves, Two Sisters Caves and Reach Falls. The Urban Development Corporation, maintaining some of the island's finest beaches and recreational facilities for your enjoyment. Yes, it's Emancipation and Independence Time again. Between July 31 to August 6, lots of fun and exciting island-wide celebrations await you. Independence concerts, community church services, festival bad wagons, street dances, and lots more. And guess what? Festival fashion is back. The theme, bandana with denim, catch the fashion with it. So for this festival season, young, old, boy, girl, get your bandana and denim outfits and let's celebrate Jamaica in style. For more information, call JCDC at 926-5726-9 or email library at jcdc.gov.jm. Independence 2015, proud and free Jamaica 53. Since we get free pop style, make the world worse. As we say goodbye to St. Anne, we invite you to join us again tomorrow at the same time when we will be shining the spotlight on another national hero. Here's a hint. This national hero called Cherry Gardens Great House home. You can kickstart your research by checking gis.gov.jm to view this and other magazine programs in full. Please visit our YouTube channel. And of course, we are also on Facebook and Twitter and in the mobile app world on behalf of the entire team here at the GIS. I'm Adrian Atkinson, thanking you for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.